I was out fishing with some of my mates from over in Sydney. The plan was to head out and do some deep dropping for some gem fish or some walleye. We caught a bunch of live bait in the morning as well and we're hoping to get a few dollies on the way. After having no luck at the real pads, I noticed a log in the corner of my eye as we were motoring towards the shelf. Logs and other debris can act as fish aggregating devices. Basically the log provides some structure for some of the smaller bait fish, which attracts some of the bigger pelagics, and also dolphin fish or mahi mahi. I've rigged up a live yakka or yellowtail scad, and I pretty much throw it as close to the log as I can. I threw the live yakka out unweighted. I was using a bait runner style reel, a Thanos. This is a 8,000 size reel. Basically it's got two different gears, so in, when you flick a switch, you put it in the low drag gear, where the fish can basically run away with the yakka and swallow it whole. So you usually count to probably four seconds, then strike. And once you strike and wind in, it will engage the uh, your second gear, which is your stronger drag, allowing you for a good hookup. Murph was on the camera and adding his commentary. Nice floating log gang spotted over the back there. Alright gang, take your time mate. Like Pete, come on this side of gang bro. Come out the back. Put your line over his. Yep. Tell me when you got colour, Dan. Yeah, a little bit. That's another one. It'll be at the mate. Five or six of them under there. Alright, Pete, get ready to drop your life bait here, bro. There was a the whole school following my fish as I was pulling it up. No, don't go too tight on him, Dan. Yeah, because he's... Um... Well, you go a bit more than... Not a whole lot more, but don't, don't go too Coming up now, Dan. Bit of colour. Unfortunately, we ran into a few issues on Murph's boat. He was having some issues with the battery charging due to a faulty fuse in the alternator. We were out pretty wide and we had to make sure we had enough battery power to get back in. As such, we weren't able to get to the grounds we wanted to. While Murph and Pete were working on making a makeshift fuse, I jumped across to the boat with uh, Scotty and Steve. Steve's a gun fisherman and he's running me through the uh, basics of the deep drop using electric reels. We were dropping in about 500, 600 meters of water so you can see the massive sinkers we needed to use. We were using the sounder to try and find some slight elevations or drop offs. And then we would drop down over that sort of ground and drift across. We were using some frozen salted bait that would stay on the hooks better and also some uh, slimy mackerel. using some of the heavier paternoster rigs that you'll ever use. Steve mentioned that you want pretty much no or little current when deep dropping. You've got to put out so much line and even with these heavy sinkers if there's lots of current you can uh, end up dragging out a shitload of line and create some big bows in that line too. You lightly thumb the spool as it drops down to 500 or so meters. Yeah. 
Yeah. As we move across the ground, we've got to make sure that the line's right at the bottom. We let the baits go back down and then lift it slightly off. After seeing some little bites, we were reeling it back up. My camera ran flat, but what we were catching was uh, ocean perch. They were bloody delicious. We were unable to get the blue eye today. We had to call it in a bit early as we were having the boat issues. Still a good day all around. For more videos, please subscribe. Feel free to ask any questions in the comments section.